All right, listen, I was born in 1994. My father had all three Star Wars movies on VHS, and I watched them all religiously. I was six years old when Star Wars Phantom Menace came out, and of course, I loved it just as much as I loved all the rest of Star Wars. And of course, while I'd still try to enjoy it as much as I can, there are crystal clear problems that everyone is aware of. Mainly, this one character that single-handedly brings the entire movie down with him. Ben Quadraneros. I mean, Jesus Christ, your pod had four engines and you can't get past the starting line? No, oh, we all know it's Jar Jar Binks. Star Wars always appealed to kids, for sure, but with The Phantom Menace, it was clear the marketing was aiming for a much younger audience, and Jar Jar is living evidence of that. I mean, every movie had their action figures, but here we had Jar Jar slippers, Jar Jar alarm clocks, Jar Jar toothbrushes, cups, children's books, chairs, watches, dancing Jar Jar. And of course, Jar Jar specific computer games, but before I show you those, I want to show you some other Phantom Menace oddities that I owned as a kid. So okay, this here is the Junior Jedi Training Manual. It's an in-universe training guide for how to become a Jedi, and it had a read-along audio cassette to go with it. God, I remember listening to this over and over again. So you listen to this cassette and you follow Turn along. The page. No. Okay, okay, Jesus Christ. And you follow along with your book. It goes over the Jedi Code, the Sith, starships, languages, lightsabers, the works. With occasional comments from some of the characters like Anakin and Darth Sidious. What have we here? Another young fool who wishes to be a Jedi? Please go away, Lord Sidious. I am six years old. Listening to this is so surreal. It's all coming back to me. I remember signing this silly little Jedi oath thing. The person taking this oath acknowledges that he or she holds the Galactic Republic harmless against possible injuries from activities such as fighting battle droids, dueling Sith Lords, levitating heavy machinery, escaping bottomless sand pits, being ejected out of airlocks, trampled by Kadus, eaten by aqua monsters, or swashed by huts. <laughs> Six-year-old me, what did you sign up for? Now here's another oddity, Star Wars Pit Droids, another computer game. Uh, I remember these stupid things. Along with Jar Jar, Pit Droids were another character heavily marketed towards kids. Though theirs was more of a Three Stooges comedy and not so much... Jar Jar comedy. In this game, Watto can't control these stupid, obnoxious little droids from fucking up all over the place, so he needs your help to get them where they need to go. So it's a puzzle game, a simple one, because remember, this is for kids. The pit droids are pooped out of this little machine, and you place tiles in their path to tell them where they need to go. This seems to be using the Galactic Battlegrounds game assets, doesn't it look like it? This reminds me of Captain Toad, like a smaller puzzle game using the same engine as the bigger game. Although gameplay is much more like Mini Mario's vs. Donkey Kong, in fact, it's almost exactly like that. It's fun, actually. There's a shit ton of puzzles in this. There's like hundreds, so you could be here a while. I like how often things like this get the opening text crawl. They're just pit droids. Come on, it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, let's get to the good stuff. Jar Jar Games. In my hunt for Jar Jar games, I ended up finding three. Uh, be sure to let me know if I've missed any, because boy oh boy, these are a treat. Let's start with the smallest, Jar Jar's Journey. Now, this is for really little kids, without a doubt, but we're gonna look at it anyway, for funsies. Hello, Deli. I'm Jar Jar Binks. I'm so happy you've come to play with me today. See what I mean? Funsies. You know, this is giving me humongous entertainment vibes. In fact, yeah, that's basically what this is. You read along as Jar Jar tells you the events of Phantom Menace from his perspective, though later it moves on to other characters like Anakin and Amidala. You can click on a bunch of things in the background and they'll do funny little animations. That's where the humongous entertainment feeling comes from. There's also very, very basic minigames like this maze game, a coloring book, or Simon Says. Nothing really to write home about, though there are also songs. A droid once came to Jabba's place and knocked upon the door. When no one came to answer it, he tried again once more. Those you can write home about. It's interesting to hear Phantom Menace from the other characters' perspectives. I mean, not Jar Jar's, but to listening to Anakin and Padme talk about things is actually kind of cool. Even in this kiddie style. 
So that's about all there is to this one. Not really sure what I expected, but come on, it's a game called Jar Jar's Journey. That just had to be looked at, right? All right, so here's the next game, Gungan Frontier. And this one's much more of a full-fledged game, although not one you would ever expect at all. Did you ever play Sim Safari or Sim Park as a kid? If you have, you must be amazed I'm even bringing those up, but that's exactly what this game is, except it's Star Wars. Okay, from the top, another opening crawl. Jesus, guys, they're only Gungan. Save your crawls for the Yuzong Vong. Anyway, Boss Nass tells us, well, perhaps I should let him explain it. We want an Anu Gungan city on the empty moon. But there's no life there. Nothing to build with. Nothing to eat. You sub be needing to know bombard many things to make Wisa a new home on the moon. Yeah, so somehow the Gungans are having a population problem, and their answer is to colonize the moon. Naboo's moon, don't worry, not, not our moon. But the moon is barren with no life, so it's apparently either Obi-Wan Kenobi or Queen Amidala's job to introduce plants and animals into the ecosystem so that the Gungans can move up there and live peacefully. Okay, several issues here. How are you guys having a population problem? Now there's a lot of Gungans on Naboo, to be sure, but the opening crawl just says Uda Gunga. You guys have other cities, there's proof that you do. You can just colonize somewhere else, you have the whole planet to explore. Maybe this is the only lake on Naboo for them to live in. They do specifically say the moon is more aquatic than Naboo. Counterpoint, do Gungans actually need to live in water? They seem to be able to breathe in water or in oxygen just fine with no issues. Why go to all the trouble of building underwater bubble cities when you could just build a regular city either above or below the water? Also, I'm sure you guys were here first before the humans showed up, and there are way more of them than there are of you. Make them move up to the moon, or ask them nicely if some Gungans could live in Theed or any other Naboo city. Honestly, I'm just amazed you guys have achieved space travel. <sighs> okay. Okay, Christ, I, I gotta actually move on to the game here. You're placed on a map and can generate plants and animals on a whim. Your goal is to get these two numbers as high as possible, as that indicates a successful ecosystem and a large amount of Gungans living here. All the while, you have R2, Jar Jar, and the Crash to help you maintain a delicate balance in the ecosystem. And delicate it is. It is not easy to keep a decent environment going on here. Though, I guess it's unsurprising, this isn't exactly a small order here to terraform a planet. This is a complex game with randomly generated maps and landing points, a specific amount of plants and animals to place, and a web to follow for who eats what and what eats whom. I'm kind of amazed by it all, actually. You want to start with the plants and work your way up to the herbivores, getting used to all the weird Gungan animal names, Jaboons, Philumpusets, and what have you. You want to make sure the plants don't go extinct from herbivores eating them, and you gotta keep the herbivores in check by placing predators, but you don't want a situation where there's nothing but predators either, so you have the Gungans harvest the predators, so their population increases, and then sometimes you get natural disasters, or what I like to call Jar Jar disasters, where he does things like accidentally releases a bunch of animals into the world when you don't want him to. Jar Jar actually pops up to help you on the side of the screen every two minutes to say some nonsense, but you can thankfully shut him off with the Jar Jar asleep button. A button we all wish was around more often. It's kind of exhausting to play, actually. I found myself spending an awful lot of time on this. There's so many little things you can do, like check out the new Gungan City. You'll get requests from them every so often, and it will grow or shrink depending on your ecosystem's health. You can consult the Crash for very detailed information on every little critter in the game. Honestly, you could just play this game forever until you get a high enough score that you get bored, or you lose control and let the entire moon's ecosystem go out of whack. So I think I'm going to move on, but before I do, just make sure you remember that everything you've seen here, it's Obi-Wan and Amidala doing it. Yeah, I can't let that be forgotten. So this is the last game, the last Jar Jar game. It's Jar Jar Binks' 3D adventure game. It is a board game. It is a pop-up board game. And I don't know what that means. So this is the Jar Jar board game, the 3D adventure game, all set up and ready to go. And I this was not easy to set up. I really want to emphasize this. This was about uh, 40 minutes of like, Getting the board to work like this and stand up like this. There are like, it came with like plastic divots or, or, or screws, for lack of a better term, to like keep it up here. 
I have no idea how to close this. It is taped on the back and on the bottom here to like keep it from like, you know, ricketing around. It, it like stays there. And it, it provided me with double-sided tape to use, which was a nice addition, but I didn't use this because it's about 17 years old. I was really amazed at, at just how much work went into this. Like, they, like I, I really gotta... They could have just made Jar Jar Monopoly or, you know, Jar Jar Trouble, you know, like, Bomb Bad Trouble, but like, no, they... Someone designed this, and, and like an artist worked on this, and, and made it work in, you know, this 3D pop-up book kind of way. Now, I use that word work, I don't know how well I can use that word work. I've studied the rules extensively, and I still don't fully understand, but from what I gather, we are all trying to get these little Gungan Jar Jar pieces to fill our our Gungan Honor Award. These were th that's what this is. This is a Gungan Honor Award so that you are forever honored by the Gungans. That's a big deal. And like actually now that I think about it, I, I feel bad for the parents that had to inevitably set this up for their children because no child no child was setting this up. It was just not happening. So on each turn we like we flip one of these Jar Jar P. It's Obi Wan Kenobi. I don't. I don't know what what he does. There, there are special pieces. This is not your regular piece. It's just one with the face on it. All right. It, it basically just means like I can flip another, another. Fuck. So this is Battle Droid, uh, but it's yellow. So from my understanding, this goes to the yellow player, or at least gives the yellow player an opportunity. Because the entire point of all this is that this this Jar Jar piece is supposed to interact with everything that's going on here. Like, I, th I think Jar Jar is supposed to go there for the Battle Droid game. And we're, we're as, uh, as players, we are trying to keep Jar Jar from killing himself. So with the Battle Droid, there's like a wheel here that I had to install manually to, you know, spin and see if you get a battle droid or not, but like when I spin it, I mean there's a little bit of battle droid there. I don't know if like there has to be zero battle droid or you know if the little bit of battle droid doesn't count because like I could spin this a thousand times. And, I mean alright that one's okay, but like oh there goes Jar Jar. The concept doesn't really match with the practicality. So I mean, I'm spinning a million times and I, I'm getting battle droids every time. So I'm assuming that that didn't work and that Jar Jar got shot by battle droids. But all right, let's do let's do another turn. Let's say it's green players turn, but it's not, it's orange players turn because it's orange. And, and then this one, he puts Jar Jar here at the fish. The, what's supposed to happen here is that like there's a jaw. I don't know how well the camera can pick it up. There's like a jaw that moves like this, and when I spin the wheel, it, it's supposed to go up and down, and, and like, it kind of does? But like, if I spin it, like, alright, his mouth closed there. I think that means that I lost. Okay, no, I read it, I read it a little bit more. You're supposed to, uh, nope, you're, it's supposed to be closed. Jar Jar, it's supposed to be closed. And you put a finger in the hole. You put one finger into one hole and you spin it very slowly, like from one side to the other. And if it does if it like droops down all the way like that, then Jar Jar has been eaten by a giant sea monster. Okay, I just figured out I just figured out what the Qui-Gon does. Oh god. So Jar Jar goes like here. There's a spring here. It's very hard to tell because of the camera that we're using here today and because I don't think that I set this up properly at all because it doesn't really spring but I, I assume okay uh, hang on oh fuck and you're supposed to spring it like what's that gonna do you know like you spring it and theoretically it's supposed to uh, launch the Jar Jar like 
this away, and if it smacks Dab into Liam Neeson, then you lose. But if he misses Liam Neeson, then you win and you get the Qui-Gon. Is this a Qui-Gon? It's another fish. And then as you win parts, which we haven't done once yet because this entire thing is inoperational, uh, you slowly but surely gather these Jar Jar pieces and whoever fills their Gungan Honor Award first wins the game. Now this is the Kadu, and we haven't done that one yet. All the way up here, and this is the only one that I can really get working at any sort of functional way, you put Jar Jar right there on top of this Kadu, which is a species that lives on Naboo, and you spin... It's this one. It's this wheel, and do the same thing that you kind of did with the fish. You kind of put your finger in the hole, and slowly turn it that away, and if the... Is it, oh, there we go. See, if, if he kind of bucks him off like a bull, like that, and Jar Jar goes flying off, then you lose. But if he stays on for two rotations... Get over here, Jar Jar, please. I would show you a game of this, you know, a session, if you will, of Jar Jar Binks' 3D adventure game, but, like... No one wanted to play my Jar Jar game, so here it is next to the trash can. Like, I don't know how to close it. That, that says, oh, 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 so it does just, oh, I never tried it. I was a little bit, uh, squeamish to ruin it, but okay, so it just closes. It just closes. It, it just closes. So here's the Jar Jar Binks 3D adventure game back up in the box, super convenient, you can just place it back into the trash where it belongs and, you know, save it for the next time, the next opportunity for you to play Jar Jar Binks' 3D adventure game, there he is. No, but like, get out of there, I spent like, ten dollars on you. Oh god. Ah.